Today we're going to talk about really, really important realities of green flags and red flags and healthy relationships and warning signs and really unhealthy things that people bring to the table when you are either buried underwater and screaming silently for help in an abusive or narcissistic relationship or If you have just exited or you're years into exiting, but you're still attracting unhealthy people. Today, this is your day because we're going to talk about how you're showing up for you in your life with red flags and green flags. So you might be asking yourself, I don't have a clue what a red flag is. I don't have a clue what a green flag is. And what's it matter? There are warning signs and red means stop and green means, okay, go with caution, right? Just like when you go through a green light and you're driving, you need to have some peripheral vision out there to see who else isn't minding the road and could create some dangerous situations for you driving. It's the same in real life with relationships. Now, why would it be hard for somebody to not recognize red flags? If we have codependent behaviors, codependent survival mechanisms, meaning that we were forced to not fully allow the expression of our thoughts, our emotions, our self, so if we were cramped into somebody else's box of that's okay, that's not okay, instead of being allowed a full spectrum of emotional development as children, psychological development, physical development, uh, we haven't actually learned how to be safe in ourself. So codependent people sometimes do not see red flags because they have learned, we have learned that love and abuse go together. That in order to receive love, we must receive abuse also. And that the mistreatment is normal. We can even develop a reality point to expect abuse, manipulation, intimidation, cruelty, and that being taken advantage of is just the way it is. But that's not true. That's a lie. And we do not want to participate in that lie in our life anymore if we want to heal from abuse, narcissistic abuse, and face our own codependency. So I'm going to ask you to kind of buckle up. We're going to get into red flags in a relationship. And I'm going to be honest, I I would bet that some of you are going to recognize some of these And it's going to make you wonder what on earth is going on and what do you do. But we'll get to that at the end. I don't want you to worry or jump too far ahead in this. I want you to stay really present in the now. And let's talk about red flags in relationships. If you experience overly controlling behavior, if they're trying to control your movements, decisions, beliefs, uh, that they are the only ones who know what's best for you, that is a red flag. A lack of trust, a major, major red flag in an unhealthy, unstable relationship is if there's a lack of trust. And that hurts when you are not being trusted. So you sometimes we can try to over show up and show that we are so trustworthy. But remember, some people have their own issues like If we're talking a narcissist or an abusive person, they're going to have their own problems and they're not going to be able to see you in your trustworthy self. Remember, a healthy relationship requires and has trust from both sides, ebbing and flowing. If you have a feeling of low self-esteem or the other person is coming at you feeding your low self-esteem, breaking you down further, stomping on you, major red flag, because that's just showing you who they are, not who you want to be or who you are. If there's physical, emotional, or mental, abusive, manipulative, 
threats or intimidation, this type of behavior is never accepted. It's harder to distinguish the, the emotional and the mental or psychological abuse than it is physical abuse, but all of them. If somebody's gaslighting you, if somebody's coercion, using coercion or emotional uh, tactics to play on your guilt or shaming you, you've, you've got to just see that for what it is. It's a massive red flag. If somebody is using substances, they are in a self-destructive habit and you're not going to find a healthy connection there. It doesn't matter if it's a parent, a child, a romantic relationship. It is an indicator that that person has impulse control uh, complications. They are struggling with emotional regulations and that they have pain that you cannot help them with. They are looking for escapes and a temporary high and numbness, a temporary feeling of happiness. So that is a major red flag for anybody. If you see narcissism or anger issues in somebody, just trust that their ego is out of balance and that isn't something that you want to get involved with and try to fix. And if somebody is leaning more on that anger side during a conflict, if they have a lack of emotional regulation or emotional connection to self, again, major red flag, not something that you want to be in. Now, here's an interesting one because the dance with narcissists They need a codependent personality, which that's us, right? If we're healing from abuse, we have some codependent tendencies if we lack boundaries and things. So this one is an interesting one because codependency can be a toxic trait to other people. So codependency, like as we're healing, this is why it's so crucial for us to heal our self-toxic traits, but we have got to face our own codependency because when we want to attract a healthy partner or have healthy friendships or healthy work relationships, we have to take a good hard look at ourselves. And codependency or relationship addiction, and uh, essentially we rely on other people too much excessively for emotional, physical, psychological support. We're asking them for too much, okay? Okay big red flag, guys. (laughs) And I say that with a little bit of laughter and a little lighthearted because it is a long journey to heal. And we are, we, we always have a, a, you know, roll in our healing. And sometimes we need to clean up our own backyard. This is one of those areas. So moving on to the next red flag, if somebody is unable to resolve conflicts, right? If you can't trust and if somebody lacks honesty, if they're unable to really be trusting and honest in the conflict resolution resolution, or in any situation, uh, if that's a repetitive behavior that somebody has, that is a major red flag, okay? If they are constantly jealous and you are not allowed to hang out with the who you want to hang out with. And I'm not saying that you get to go do cheaty things. I'm just saying that if somebody is always having to know exactly what you're doing and where you're at, if they are just that controlling, their level of jealousy is unhealthy. And that says a lot about where they're at in their life and how they are dealing with their own self-worth. If anybody is gaslighting you, right there, that says it all, get rid of them. Because gaslighting is a manipulation, psychological tactic that people will use to keep you unstable. So they're telling you right up front, this is a great big warning sign that you are not going to be safe with this person. If they lack connection to their own emotions. So if they have like two or three emotions, well, if you've ever seen an emotional wheel, there's like 
70 or 80 different emotions. And if somebody doesn't have the ability to hold space emotionally for you and with you, they are not going to be a safe person as you heal codependency. If they are negatively impacting relationships with you that are stable, so with family or friends that are trusted, healthy relationships, this isn't going to be a good person in the long run at all. They are going to escalate that and they will isolate you. If they have an inability to communicate, right? If you're constantly having to dig for information to get the whole picture, that is not somebody who is comfortable in their own integrity or their authenticity. And that is a major let it go red flag. If they don't have a social circle, You need to dig into that and see, is this just a warning sign or is this a red flag? Because a lot of narcissistic people are not going to have a social circle. They may appear on the outside to have lots of, I'm using air quotes here, friends, but quite honestly, they don't have relationships because they cannot manage relationships. So I'm not picking on introverts here, right? Introverts, that's a totally different, like you just need to kind of see if that lifestyle fits with you. That's not a red flag, uh, unless it's a red flag to you personally. I'm talking about those people who cannot maintain and hold because they deal, they have such bad character, behaviors, and traits. If they can't hold space and relationships and friendships, that is what I'm talking about. Okay? So all of these things, and there's more red flags out there. I could probably go on for a couple of hours, but that is a large amount of red flags, right? If somebody doesn't communicate, show up authentically, if they're not holding respect for you and your asks and your boundaries, those are all red flags. And they can be red or yellow flags. Either way, it's a caution. It's a caution. When we're upside down in abusive spaces, because we lack the ability to, to see these red flags, we've normalized them through conditioning, it can be incredibly hard to begin to even know where to start with red flags. And start with the ones that your intuition is telling you that is wrong. Okay, at the end of this episode, we're going to talk some about what to do next. Okay, so there's some red flags happening in my relationship. I don't like it. I don't want to have it around me. What do I do next? Okay, before we get there though, I want to talk more about yellow flags and then we're going to go into green flags. So yellow flags can be, you know, maybe... Uh, somebody didn't communicate really well because they had a really bad day at work and they were hungry, right? Give me a Snickers bar. I'm hungry. That's not my go-to of choice. But you get the point, right? If somebody's conditions around them have put them in a cranky spot where they are unable to communicate appropriately, then that would be a yellow flag. If it's a one-off, that's a yellow flag. If it's a two-off, it's going to jump up to a red flag because then you're going to have to have a real conversation. How how long is this going to go on? Like we've got to get you some snacks in your freaking car because your attitude after XYZ is really beginning to wear on my patients and it's making my life feel unpredictable and unsafe. I don't like that. How can we address this? And then give them a chance to address it. If they address it, you know, if by two, you've got upped it to a red flag and then, you know, you're like, okay, we're going to address it. And they say, yes, we'll address it. It's down to a yellow flag. It's slightly less severe. They're addressing it. And then give them some time to address it because a healthy, safe, authentic, genuine, integrity-filled person is going to want to grow and change right? And then it would be a non-issue. This person is a pretty green flagged person, somebody who can hold space, listen, and authentically talk to you is going to be somebody that you want to keep around in your life. So what are green flags, right? What are these 
these mystical unicorns of connection of which you speak, <laughs> a green flag is a clear indicator of the right to move forward. Move forward in the friendship, move forward in the relationship, move forward in the conversation with a family member that is exhibiting green flags. And green flags are going to feel very weird, very unnatural, very uncomfortable if you have codependency and you're recovering from abuse or narcissistic abuse. So you might need to work on green flags quite a bit and even uh, calming your nervous system and your PTSD if you have PTSD around green flags and getting those red flags denormalized, desensitized and out of your system. So let's go into green flags now. A green flag in somebody is that they are a good listener that they pay attention, put effort to hearing and understanding you, that they make space for you, right? They ask thoughtful, respectful questions and that they have some compassion. They're active in their listening and they're compassionate, emotionally connected to you listeners. It's important to be heard And a green flag is when somebody really can show up and listen to you. Somebody who is comfortable talking about their thoughts and feelings, massive green flag. If somebody can hold space around their feelings, it means they're going to be able to hold space around many difficult conversations because they have a deep comfort and understanding of themselves. And that is really important. It's important because emotional, emotional stuffing, like if you think about your life in an abusive space, emotional stuffing where you're not allowed to have the emotions or the thoughts that you have That, in order for that to end, what's the opposite of that? It's emotional sharing and comfort and recognition of emotions. It's demonstrating that you have a safety with emotions. So somebody who can talk about their feelings and feel their feelings with regulation, okay? All of us codependents out there, we're going to be hitting on that dysregulated until we do our own work on our emotional feelings. And emotions and feelings are not in our head. Our body shows up to feel those. Think of the last time that you were surprised or think of the last time that you were, um, I've got all these positive emotions in my head right now. Uh, I wish I had an emotion wheel right next to me, but I don't. Let me find one. I found one. Hmm. So shocked and dismayed. I think that we can all relate to a moment where we just utterly felt shocked and maybe even dismayed at whatever the situation that happened was. And in front of that, we felt stunned before we felt shocked. And before that, we felt surprised. So It's important that we explore that emotion wheel and our emotion connectiveness to ourselves. And when we see that in somebody else, we know that that is a major green flag in that person, that they have a healthy understanding and relationship with self. If you've never seen, heard, or experienced an emotion wheel, pause this podcast right this minute. Go Google emotion wheel and explore feelings, and then come back and listen. Our next green flag that we're going to talk about is that they have a cognitive self-awareness, that they are aware of their footprint in their life, that they have behaviors and integrity and, you know, they're 
authenticity is matching their hopes, dreams, fears, the way that they talk to people, the way that they show up, right? That that is all in a gel, right? It's all connected together. It all makes sense. They're congruent with themselves. They have empathy, right? That they can empathize with other people's emotions or situations. It doesn't mean that they run to the rescue, right? We don't want to be rescued by somebody. We want to be independent. I'm not saying that you can't accept help. I'm just saying that we don't want somebody who's controlling or manipulative. When we need help, they show up. They can empathize with our need to have help. It's important that somebody have empathy and that they recognize how other people might feel in any given situation. That is a green, green, green flag. They are engaged in the relationship that you have. So if you say to your mom, uh, mom, I want to come over and bake cookies. What day is good for you? And your mom says, I'd love to do that. I want to bake cookies on, I can do it on Sunday or Thursday. And you choose Thursday and you show up to bake cookies and your mom has ditched you. She isn't there. Okay. She's not very engaged in her relationship with you. And that is not a green flag. But if you show up and she's like, okay, I'm all ready. I've got aprons. Let's bake. She's engaged. She's showing up. She cares and she's reflecting to you by showing you that you are a critical part of her commitment, okay? Certainly in a romantic relationship, they should be engaged because if they're not, you're just being uh, yo-yoed as a back burner. You need to cut them loose. Show some self-love to you. Things move at a comfortable pace. Nobody's rushing anything. People are uh, able to have healthy conversations, make plans. There's just nothing being forced or over zealot. Okay. If somebody's willing to be vulnerable with you, that is a massive two way trusting street. And if their vulnerability, is authentic and genuine, it will match the other things in their life that are coming to the front. And that can be in any kind of a relationship. They know what they want, right? And I'm not talking about, you know, a college kid changing their major eight times. That's just part of learning who you are when you're young. I'm talking about if people are clear And they do what they say they're going to do, right? That's appropriate, especially in a romantic relationship. If somebody is kind, not just once, but consistently kind, that is a green flag. If somebody is honest and respectful, those are green flags. And not just once, but consistently, consistently kind, honest, respectful. How people treat others tells you a lot about who they are and how they're going to show up to you over time. Okay. Because how people treat others tells you a lot about how they feel about themselves, how people talk about other people behind closed doors, right? If somebody is stable, Okay, if they are stable in, like maybe they're in flux in their job, that's, you know, if it's something that's going to be expected throughout life. But I'm talking about long term stability. If they are stable in how they approach and how they see life and how they handles difficult situations, if you're seeing stability in how they value their footprint in their life, that's a green flag. Versus if they are volatile moment to moment to moment, if they're changing their mind 200 times, and I'm not talking about like what they're going to have for dinner, but I'm talking about in larger things. If you just feel like you're on a roller coaster, that is not very stable. 
if somebody is really easy to be around, right? You're not feeling the sting of a narcissistic attack, but you are feeling safe and comfortable, valuable and seen, that's a green flag, right? And if somebody takes active steps to grow, if they are a growth-minded person, major green flag. A very uncomfortable green flag is if people care about and accommodate your needs. If they show up wanting to consistently, wanting to, let's say you're a vegetarian, and they take that into consideration every time you guys are going to eat together, that is a very kind green flag. And they're telling you that they respect. That's a sign of respect and admiration and value that they're bringing. And, you know, measure all these green flags over time. Any one off would put it back in the yellow flag. A two off, well, maybe we're looking at a yellow, maybe we're looking at a red flag. We need to have a big conversation because the conversation we had after the first instance didn't do much good. And a green flag would be that you both have independent, and this isn't just romantic, but that you're able to have independent friendships, that your your ability to have independent interests, relationships, that those are trusting of the other person. And, and that can be, especially if you were raised in an enmeshed household, it is going to be very difficult for that household, that family, that parent to allow you to have external relationships that they're not involved in. And that's, you know, you need to be really realistic. What's happening with friendships or family members or romantic partners if they are finding it difficult for you to have independence? That is a not healthy space to be. So people who allow you your independence and celebrate your independence, green flag, okay? And if you feel good around people, okay, terrifying to a nervous system that's tuned into survival and PTSD and those realities coming out of abuse and narcissistic relationships, but when you can redial, retune your nervous system to the green flags of a healthy relationship, your entire life will light up. It really will. I've walked this path that I'm talking to you about today. And it is very, very uncomfortable to unlearn that abuse is love and learn that feeling good and respected and seen and valued And knowing that no matter what, this person or this family members uh, who've gone through therapy, in my case, are safe and trusted and respectable. And these are the people I want to bring towards me in my life. So those are some green flags. And green flags make you feel good, seen, and valued. Red flags feel like you've just been stung by a scorpion. Okay, so those are the two things and they are all your, they're all ways for you to build your intuition, your intuitive guidance to navigate into the healthy life that you want to have, the healthy, beautiful, safe life that you deserve to have. Okay, so remember at the beginning when we said, but why would a codependent person want these red flags? And there is that confusing thing to our brain, our spirit, our nervous system, our survival system, that we have learned that love and abuse are uh, intertwined, that they go together. And that's a horrible thing, right? That is a horrible horrible, horrible reality that many people have learned to normalize. And so what we want to do is talk about how do I get the hell out of that mindset? Okay, (laughs) Because we can unlearn that dysfunctional uh, 
relationship idea. So we've got to start getting honest. Okay, we've got to start getting honest with ourselves. And I'm going to talk about all the things that we have to do to ourselves because whether or not we're able to have those those conversations with our our family, our friends, or our romantic partner largely depends on how safe you physically physically safe that you are in your relationship. So, you've got to start being honest with yourself, right? You've got to stop pulling the blinders over and crawling into a hole. You've got to realize that I can, I can face this. I am strong enough to face this because that is honest. That is truthful. We have to start looking at and addressing our negative thought pattern. And we have to distance ourselves from taking everything so personally. We need to look at our overall structure of how we treat ourselves, our sleep pattern, our health pattern, our eating pattern, how we are loving and showing up for ourselves. We need to consider the reality of the of working with a therapist or a coach or a counselor or getting into a group therapy, right? We need to Honestly, start at the beginning and reach out for help and admit to ourselves that we need to change the life direction that we're on. We can create healthy spaces around us. And that can be with family or friends who are supportive and safe and healthy. We can introduce new hobbies into our life and meet new people. <clears throat> and share new experiences. Sometimes challenging ourselves can get us out of our head. It can get us to stop overthinking. It can calm PTSD attacks. It can get us into the tangible, real world. And we've got to start learning how to establish boundaries and respect our intuitive voice and our own needs. If we can do some of these things... For ourselves, then, you know, if we're physically safe, we can have this conversation with our uh, other half or our parent or our sibling. And we can maybe ask them to go to therapy with us. But I'm going to be really honest with you if you're in a narcissistic relationship, you do not want to go to therapy or couples counseling with a narcissist. It will gaslight you and create a horrifically incensed trauma bond that will be kind of add years on to your sentence of survival and you don't need to be there. But, and if you're in a healthier relationship that maybe just has a few red flags and you need some help learning how to deepen and grow or you want to see if there's a possibility of recovering or keeping a relationship, then it really is time to just get on and start having better conversations. And it may behoove you to bring in a counselor that is, if you know there's a history of any kind of abusive or codependent tendencies in either of you, bringing in a therapist who has skills in those areas. I am not going to be one to refer people to marriage counselors because people who have abusive or codependent histories do not belong with marriage counselors who are trained in 50-50 equate of blame. That is not ever going to be something that would be healthy for an abusive person to sit through. So that is an overview of red flags, green flags, and why we as codependent people do not necessarily recognize the red flags as being bad, right? But we do now. We have new information. And I'm going to encourage you in the coming week to keep pushing forward and building a healthier conversation with yourself. 
to keep showing up for you and dumping love and goodness and wholesome kindness into your soul because you deserve it. Thank you for tuning in today, and I hope that you have a fabulous remainder of your day.